Welcome back. A vote on a contempt resolution against Attorney General William Barr is looming on the House floor this morning after the Democrat-led House Judiciary Committee voted last week to hold him in contempt of Congress for failing to turn over the full, unredacted Mueller report and its underlying evidence. Our next guest was in that chamber on Wednesday. When it all went down, Texas Republican Congressman John Ratcliffe sits on the House Judiciary, Intel, and Homeland Security committees. He's also a former federal prosecutor. And Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. You bet, Maria. Good so, to be here. So what happened when, when Jerry Nadler, the chairman of your committee, uh, went for a contempt of Congress vote for William Barr? Can you tell us about what that day was? Well, Maria, there have been plenty of days I've been uh, embarrassed to be a member of Congress uh, uh, based on the conduct of some of its members, but none more so than this week. And think about it. The once esteemed House Judiciary Committee uh, marked up a resolution to hold the Attorney General of the United States in contempt for his refusal to commit a crime. Bill Barr, who had no obligation to turn over a single word or comma of Bob Mueller's report turned over as much as was permitted by law, and that wasn't enough uh, for the Democrats. And they stood there and accused him of lying about what Bob Mueller really meant before they've heard a word from Bob Mueller about what he really meant. It was all staged. It was all scripted. Uh, it was all part of the Democratic uh, uh, effort to create the illusion of a cover-up. Remember, Maria, that these are the Democrats that promised evidence of collusion that didn't exist, that promised that Bob Mueller was going to find Donald Trump guilty of crimes that he didn't commit. And when that didn't happen, uh, they either had to admit they were wrong to the American people or they had to find a villain. And unfortunately, they've made Bill Barr that villain. And, uh, and they'll do anything they can to try and damage his reputation before... Uh, he delivers the message that he intends uh, to deliver because he's promised to get to the bottom of the very suspect origins of uh, this Russia-Trump uh, collusion conspiracy investigation. So is that what this is about? They don't want him to do an investigation that he said he would be doing? I mean, there in and of itself is obstruction. Yeah, Maria, they're scared to death. Uh, it's, it's why when you talk about, you know, accountability, uh, one of the things that they fear is Michael Horowitz's report coming out. But the other thing that they fear is an attorney general who has been um, unapologetic, unabashed and unrelenting in his pledge to get to the bottom of this uh, Trump-Russia collusion narrative that doesn't make any sense. We know now, because we've waited on Bob Mueller's report, we know that there was no collusion. But the predicate behind looking for that evidence of collusion is quickly unraveling, and the Democrats are in a panic about it. You know, it, it, it's incredible to me that they are so obviously upset and afraid for what comes out. But it's incredible that you've got people like Jim Comey going on TV shows and saying that he's proud of the FBI and how it handled the Russia probe. The FBI doesn't spy to begin with. The FBI investigates. The FBI, in my view, took very reasonable steps, careful steps to try and understand, is that true? And I can't believe Republicans would have wanted it any other way. And we acted in a responsible, limited and constrained way. I'm proud of the way we conducted ourselves. Wow. That was former FBI Director Jim Comey just days ago, a few days ago. I'm back with Republican Congressman John Ratcliffe of Texas. And Congressman, you just heard Jim Comey. Can you explain this? Well, my uh, former colleague, Trey Gowdy, likes to refer to him as St. Jim. Um, I liken uh, Jim Comey more to an Avenger superhero. He's always the hero of every story, saving America time and time again. Um, gosh, you know, as I listen to that, uh, Jim Comey um, is proud and wouldn't change a thing, really. Uh, he's proud that he put Peter Strzok in charge of investigating Donald Trump, the same Peter Strzok who, while he was investigating Donald Trump, promised to F him and to stop him. He's proud of his hand-picked deputy director, Andy McCabe, who lied under oath, uh, lied to the inspector general and has been criminally referred for that. And, of course, we know Jim's proud of himself, but the inspector general found him insubordinate. And many of us uh, believe that he either is or should be under investigation for violating the Espionage Act, for recording his conversations with President Trump in the Oval Office and then intentionally leaking uh, classified information to start this uh, uh, investigation. So, 
You know, Maria, as you know, as a former federal prosecutor, I've worked with hundreds of FBI agents, and over the last two years, they haven't used the word proud once to describe Jim Comey. They use words like embarrassed and ashamed. And uh, every time he uh, sends out a tweet or pens an op-ed or conducts another town hall, he just tarnishes um, the brand of the premier law enforcement um, agency in the world that he unfortunately once headed. So are we going to be able to trust the FBI again? Will there be accountability? I want to ask you about accountability for Jim Comey, Peter Strzok, and also John Brennan, because I'm being told that the director of the CIA is responsible for all counterintelligence operations. That would be John Brennan. Are we going to see accountability for all of the above? Well, here's what we know about John Brennan. In uh, August of 2016, he briefed then-Democratic Senator Harry Reid on the Steele dossier. Um, Brennan later testified under oath that the Steele dossier played no part of the intelligence community assessment. Um, that was a demonstrably false statement, and there are classified documents that I believe uh, prove that. Um, uh, I believe that there will be accountability on all fronts, uh, Maria, uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, there's an old saying that uh, justice delayed is justice denied, but I think there's a Mueller exception um, uh, to that rule. We've had to wait two years uh, on Bob Mueller, but now that his report is out and there is no collusion, um, uh, we can move forward. And within a month, the inspector general's uh, report will come out, and notwithstanding what Jim Comey says, um, I think that the inspector general looking at leaking and looking at lying and looking at FISA abuse is going to say that Jim Comey's um, FBI didn't perform as the law uh, required. But the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, movement on the board in that regard, again, is, is the attorney general, uh, Bill Barr, who has pledged to get to the bottom of a, a Trump-Russia conspiracy that uh, doesn't make any sense, and the predicate for it, and those that were not telling the truth. Donald Trump was telling the truth when he said there was no collusion, yeah. and uh, Jim Comey and folks in our law enforcement community and John Brennan and Jim Clapper and folks in the media, none of them were telling the truth, right. and I think there'll be accountability through an attorney general that has promised to get to the bottom Real of it. Real quick before you go, John Solomon at The Hill reported some important news this week. Uh, because we basically got the evidence that they wanted to destroy Donald Trump before the election. Right. And, and you know, the first biggest part of that story, Maria, is that we're just now seeing that. Those are documents that should have been produced um, previously, and they weren't. But uh, needless to say, uh, they do go specifically to the point about the Steele dossier, what the FBI knew. Um, uh, Assistant Secretary of State Kathleen Kavalik had a memo of her conversation with Christopher Steele um, where she discussed the, the dossier. And in one conversation, she determined that Christopher Steele was not being truthful um, and that the information in the dossier was demonstrably false. And she communicated that uh, uh, to the FBI. So our own government knew that the source of the dossier was not credible and knew that the dossier itself was not truthful before it was ever used right. uh, before a FISA court to get an application to spy on an American citizen, Carter Page. Again, this is one of the things that has to be looked at and fortunately will be looked at. I really do, I will tell your viewers, Maria, yeah. um, that I feel very good about having Bill Barr as the head of our Justice Department at this point in time. Certainly seems like an honest broker. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. You bet.